Good morning. Today I'll be sharing my top five most horrific audition experiences. So the first rule about auditioning for anything is you want to be prepared, which I was always pretty good at doing, except for this one particular time, which wasn't completely my fault that I was unprepared, but it happened. So this was back in 2006 when I was a junior in high school, and I decided to go to the cadets first winter camp. And this was about to be my first time ever doing anything with drum corps, so I wanted to make a great impression. So for some reason I decided to wait until just two weeks before this audition camp, before I registered, which wasn't really that big a deal, like I'm pretty quick at figuring out parts and I could have been prepared in two weeks. So I went on the cadets website and filled out all the information to register, and I assumed that they would email me or I'd get some kind of PDF printout with the music right away, but for whatever reason, that wasn't the case. After I registered and paid and all that, I got an email confirmation saying that the music was going to be mailed. Yeah, like that thing that they did in like the 1700s. But I wasn't horribly concerned because the cats were based out of Allentown and I lived in Turnersville, New Jersey at the time, which that was like pretty close. It was like about an hour and a half. So I figured, okay, I guess the mail gets sent out, I'll get my audition materials in like two or three days, and that's still enough time, that's like a week and like five or four days to practice and prepare for this. I got this. So an entire week went by, and I still didn't get the music in the mail, so now I was growing a little bit concerned. So what I should have done at the time was probably look on the website for a phone number and call up, but I'm pretty socially awkward, especially in high school, I was really socially awkward, and I didn't like calling strangers on the phone. So. I sent an email. So another day went by and finally someone from the cadets responded saying that I should be getting that packet soon. Hopefully. And me being socially awkward, decided not to say anything back except for, okay. So two more days went by and I still didn't get this audition packet. So now there's about four days left until this audition camp happens. So I had to send another email. Should have called though, but I didn't. So the next day, now we're at three days left, they sent another email saying, Hey, we can fax you this information. That's right, fax. Like that thing they did in like the 1970s. And of course we didn't have a fax machine in our house because that's not really a thing. I mean, it was 2006, but we were a little bit beyond that point of having a fax machine. So I spent the rest of the day trying to find somebody who had a fax machine. Like I called some friends, some relatives, and yeah, nobody has that crap. So I sent another email back saying, hey, I don't have access to a fax machine. What do I do? So then the next day, which now we're two days before this audition camp's gonna happen, still haven't gotten the materials, I get an email back saying that I should go to Staples to get their fax machine number and they will send it there and then I'll just pay for the paper to be printed out. So I did that. I went over to Staples, got their fax machine number. Now keep in mind this is before smartphones were a thing, so I had my little flip phone and I couldn't send an email on the flip phone. I could have called on the flip phone, but you know, the anxiety. So I got the number of the fax machine, went back home, sent an email to the guy saying, hey, this is the fax machine number, then waited for him to say, hey, okay, we sent it, and then I had to drive back to Staples to get the stuff printed out. But by the time that he sent that email, Staples was closed. So now, finally, with one day remaining before this camp, I got the audition material. And it was a crap ton of stuff. A lot of really hard rhythms. I mean, it is the cadets, you know, one of the best DCI cores out there. So yeah, it's gonna be some hard stuff. So I did my best to prepare with just one day of rehearsal time, and I did all right. You know, we're at the audition camp. I'm playing through the exercise, doing a pretty good job reading. But then the tenor tech says to pull out the cadence. And hey, guess what? I didn't get the cadence in my audition packet. So I look around the room at everybody else who's more prepared than I am, and I'm the only person that doesn't have the cadence music. So yeah, you know how I said I'm socially awkward and get anxiety talking to strangers? Well, this was the epitome of that, because I had to raise my hand and tell the tenor tech, who was actually this really nice guy, Stan, but he was still a stranger at the time, so I was scared to tell him that I didn't have this music. But Stan was real cool about it. He just went and got it printed out for me and came back and I had to sight read it, which actually didn't go too badly. I got through it, so it worked out, I guess.
So this next story is from my audition with the New York Knicks drumline, which before I get into this, I just wanna say that marching in the New York Knicks drumline was probably some of the funnest gigs I've ever done. It was a really great group of people that I got to march with in this drumline, and performing at Madison Square Garden in front of thousands of people was really, really fun, and I got some great pictures off of it. And if you live in the New York City area and you're interested in the world of professional drumline, I recommend checking out Gallon Entertainment. I'll leave a link for them in the description. They're the company that runs the New York Knicks drumline, as well as the New York Giants drumline. But there was one part of this audition that's gonna stick with me forever. So the first part of this audition started out really well. We were just playing through the audition material. I was very prepared, unlike that cadet's camp. We also did a standard marching basics block, which killed that. But then they told us to set up for the visual audition. Which, you know, I've had my fair share of drumline body. You know, we got the one leg up thing. We got the deep squat thing. You got the turn thing. You have the bend over and show everyone what you're playing thing. So I'm pretty well versatile with drumline visuals. But little did I know, this was gonna be really different. Which at first I was like, oh cool, this is gonna be fun, you know. I'm pretty quick to pick up stuff. Or so I think I am. And this whole routine we did was written to that Usher song, Scream which I can't play the whole song because this video will get flagged for copyright, but imagine that that's playing this entire time. So this was like four or five years ago. I don't remember exactly what the choreography was, but I do remember that it started out with four very confident steps forward, followed by a full 360 degree turn to the right, and then there was some other stuff that I don't remember, and this went for about a minute. And while we were learning this, I was realizing how much I sucked at this stuff. Like, have you guys ever tried to do something well, but you're really bad at it, but you act like you're doing it really well, even though you know you're bad at it? Yeah, that was me for this visual audition. Oh, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. 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 And as I'm looking around at everybody else, I slowly start to realize that I am by far the worst person at this in the entire audition. And I was actually worried that I was gonna get cut for being so bad. But I didn't get cut, I made it in, and I was actually the section leader for most of the gigs. So it worked out. And we didn't have to do anything like that for the entire time that I marched there. So, yeah, it was fine. And like I said, I really loved my time in the New York Knicks drumline, and I think their audition process is like completely different now than it was back then, because that was their first season doing it. But just know that that part of the audition really sucked for me. This story goes all the way back to my very first audition for anything ever. When I was in seventh grade, I auditioned for the All South Jersey Middle School Regional Honors Band. So the way New Jersey did their auditions for percussionists back then, I'm pretty sure they've changed it since then, this was a real long time ago, but you had four different sections you could audition for if you were a percussionist. You could do snare drum, timpani, mallet percussion, or traps, which is everything that's not those three. So me, being an overachieving 11 year old, decided to audition for both snare and traps. So first I went and did the traps audition. And it actually was going really well, you know, I played my little triangle thing, did the tambourine thing, the cymbal thing, the bass drum thing, everything was going perfect. But then we have everybody's favorite part, the sight reading. So in this audition room, they had your regular concert bass drum set up for, you know, your normal little rudiment sort of excerpt thing they had you do. But for the sight reading, they had this other bass drum set up. And they had me go over to it, and it looked like it was a marching bass drum. It was set up facing vertical on one of those cross stand things. And at that point, I had not played on a marching bass drum ever. But I did just watch Drumline the movie, because that came out the week before. Yo, Jay, what are you doing, man? So I was pretty much an expert in marching bass drum technique. So for sight reading in the audition, you get about 30 seconds to look over the piece you're about to play. And as I'm looking at this bass drum music, I'm realizing that these rhythms are harder than any other rhythm I've ever played on the bass drum. Like, not even close. Like, in the seventh grade, all the bass drum music is just quarter notes. Maybe sometimes you'll get an eighth note upbeat, but yeah, you never see like 16th note rhythms. But I'm not too worried about it, because I can play all this stuff on a concert snare drum. Now I'm just playing on it horizontally, so, eh, what's the difference? I'll be alright. And oh man, was I not alright. I started playing this audition piece, and I quickly realized that this bass drum was tuned to a concert bass drum, not the really articulate marching bass drum sounds that I thought it would have.
And the head on the left side that I was hitting with my left hand was like not even really on. It sounded incredibly terrible. And as I started playing this, I realized, crap, I should be playing on the right side head because that's probably what they wanted. But there's no time for me to change my whole body position and get my arm over the drum without totally screwing up. And as I'm thinking through all this stuff, I'm screwing up because it's sight reading and everybody screws up. And I was also playing with probably the softest mallets they had available. That was a terrible choice. Milk was a bad choice. So I'm playing this concert bass drum with terrible technique on poorly tuned heads with really bad mallets and I'm playing it wrong. Oh, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So yeah, that was a pretty awful first audition experience for me. But I still had the snare audition to do, and I did really good in that. I think I came in in first chair, actually. I don't know, it was a long time ago, I don't really remember. But I know I got in, so. This story is from my junior year of high school, trying out for All State Band. So I was once again trying out for snare drum and traps for this audition. And in high school, the traps audition, they also make you play some mallet percussion as part of the audition requirements. Just in case they have a whole bunch of mallet parts, then they might make one of the traps players also play mallets. So I guess it makes sense. So I'm at the audition. We have all this stuff to play. We got our little glockenspiel excerpt all ready to go. And the part of the Traps audition that they picked for the solo for the audition didn't have any of the mallet percussion parts. It was just auxiliary percussion for this segment that they chose. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, they're not even going to judge us on our mallet playing. Oh, well, I'll be all right. But, but, I was wrong. So once again, everyone's favorite part, the sight reading, they decide to have us play marimba. Now, at this point in time, my sight reading chops for melodic percussion was garbage. It was terrible. Like, I could not do it. I could figure it out after looking at it for a while and be able to play whatever. But, oh man, my sight reading was so bad if I had to sight read melodic percussion. So when they had me go over to the marimba and look at this music for the sight reading, this is pretty much how that 30 seconds went. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Okay, all right, all right. I gotta sight read marimba. I don't ever do that, but all right, okay. 30 seconds. Okay, we got the key signature. All right, there's four sharps. All right, what's this? Oh, crap, I don't have my circle of fifths. I don't know it. All right, wait, I can figure it out. All right, it's, it's a fat cat get donuts at eggs, baby. All right, fat cat get donuts at e. e. Okay, we're in the key of E. Oh, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Notes go up, so I go up. go down so I go down close enough so yeah that went insanely awful like holy crap that was really bad I think I played all the rhythms right though I guess that means I got half credit uh, probably not I don't know but somehow even with doing that bad on the sight reading I still managed to make it into Allstate that year I was the very last chair but nobody cares what chair you get you know you, just, you get to put it on your college resume so State Band. So this last story is from my freshman year of high school when I was auditioning for All South Jersey Honors Band, my very first honors band as a high school student. And like I mentioned in the last video, when you're doing a traps audition, they also make you do some mallet percussion, which this was like the first time I really had to practice mallet percussion in my entire career as a percussionist, which is kind of sad thinking about it, but that's what happened. But I knew all about every good boy does fine and face, so I was able to figure out these notes, and I knew that on the piano, that note that's below the two black notes, that's C. So I can figure out all the rest of the notes. So for this trap solo, I don't remember exactly what it was. I remember it started out with some aux percussion, like tom-toms and snare drum and cymbals, and then there was xylophone for a little bit, and then went back to the aux stuff. It was something like that, but there definitely was xylophone in it and aux stuff in it. So we're at the audition now. It's going great. Got through all my excerpts, no problem. Now we're on to the solo. And the section of the solo that I had to do, it was starting at the end of whatever the auxiliary percussion part was, and then the whole xylophone part, all the way through it. Which I was perfectly fine with. You know, I practiced and prepared the crap out of the xylophone part. 
So I start going. I'm doing the thing. Got through the aux part. Did pretty well. Pretty much perfect. Now time for the xylophone. Uh oh. Alright, so let's pause and rewind for a second here. In every single audition I did in middle school, all you had to bring was a pair of snare drum sticks, and all the rest of the mallets will be there for you. Now, fast forwarding back to the present, I realize now that that's not the case in high school, as I look down and realize that there are no xylophone mallets on the xylophone. And I remember I actually looked over at the audition proctor to see, like, what I should do, and he was just standing there, not caring at all. Inside his head, he was probably like, ah, this little turd, what's he gonna do now? <laughs> but, rule number one of any live performance is the show must go on. So, I played that xylophone part with drumsticks, and it was bad. Oh, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, I know I shouldn't play on this with sticks, but the judge doesn't think I do. So as I'm playing this xylophone part with drum set sticks, I'm thinking about all the instructors that scream at the kids when they're playing xylophone or marimba or any mallet percussion instrument with drum set sticks, so that's really, really bad for the keys. But nobody stopped me in this audition, so I kept going. And I started messing up and breaking and just making dumb mistakes because I was thinking about how bad this sounded right now and how much trouble I would get in if I did this anywhere else. And normally I, I would have probably been fine if I had the correct mallets, but the sheer panic I was in, I played really, really poorly with the wrong implement. So yeah, I didn't get into that band that time. So that's my top five horrible audition experiences, which really looking back on it, it wasn't that bad. Most of them happened while I was still in middle school or high school. So, hey, at least I learned from them and did better in the professional world. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel, EMC Productions, and click that Liberty Bell. That way you get notified immediately if I post a new video and consider buying a custom t-shirt. I'll leave the link in the description. And have a good morning.